I have a couple issues. My issues is I can't see. When I look, I see three of you. So we have triple the size today. So I don't know who I'm preaching to. I, I'm just going to preach to the middle, but I'm seeing threes, and I can't read, and I have a terrible memory, and um, make equilibrium is goofed up. But this is where I want to be today. I've watched you on camera for the last three weeks. Pastor, I'll thank you for serving and leading the church. Didn't he do a wonderful job? I appreciate the staff for holding it up, but the priority is you. And I need you to turn these lights down just a tad. Um, I got to be able to see. Thank you. Um, this scripture has been on my heart and my mind for some time. My job today is to communicate truth. But my job today is to communicate my heart. About 40 days ago, uh, I had a stroke. I felt my brain release blood and um, I went to bed that night not thinking I was going to be whole again. I did not know whether I'd be able to communicate. I didn't know what was going to take place within my life. and um, I woke up in the emergency room a few days later, not remembering anything that has taken place. And I was leaving that emergency room after 14 days. The doctor came in and said, 42% of the people that walk in never walk out whole. As one of my friends say, they drink gravy out of a straw for the rest of their life. And I am so thankful I'm not one of those people. I am so thankful that God gave me a second chance in life. I am so thankful that God has given me the calling upon my life to serve Him and to serve you. But in doing so, I believe He gave me the right and the opportunity to speak truth. And I truly believe that I wanted to be Mary. I wanted to sit at the feet of Jesus and I wanted to learn from Him. But after you sit at the feet of Jesus, there's a time that we get up and we walk and we serve and we do certain things. But I also felt like I was Martha. I felt like I did a lot of stuff. And see, I've been the pastor here for 19 years. And in those 19 years, I've learned a lot of things. And if you'd be honest with me, as I'm honest with you, Sometimes when we have learned so much and we've done so much and we're good at what we do, we don't need Jesus. Sometimes I can serve without Christ. I can counsel without talking to Him. I can do certain things because I'm good at certain things and, and I can cause good things to happen because I am good at certain things. But I found out that serving Jesus out of the flesh and out of your own good does not do God any good. Because the Bible says we need to bring glory to God in everything that we do. Not just in what you can do, because in the flesh we can do certain things, but in ourselves we're no good. We can't bring glory to God in ourselves. We can't give God the glory in what I can do. But what we can do is give God the glory in what He can do through us. I spent 19 years serving. But I don't think I spent 19 years at the feet of Jesus. I've learned a lot. I've prayed a lot. I've read the Bible a lot. I've preached a lot. But what is it like to be sitting at the feet of Jesus? What is it like to absolutely learn what he wants us to do. I've had six weeks of just sitting and watching, listening, and praying. And I want to give you a sermon that has been six weeks into the making. And I want to step on your toes just like the Lord stepped on mine. See, I can't give you anything that I haven't already received. 
I can't give you anything that the Lord hasn't broken my heart with. And I believe I am a Mary. And I believe I am a Martha. Just like you are. There's times that we want to sit at the feet of Jesus like we are today and learn and soak up. And that's a very good thing. But I believe that Luke is trying to tell us here today that, you know what, we have another six months, and in those six months, I am going to die. What do we do with what we have learned? Are we sitting into the feet of Jesus and learning for our own good? Or are we set at the feet of Jesus to learn about relationships and how it's important to serve others? The first point is Mary's devotion. And he said to a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. There's a time that we need to just sit at the feet of Jesus. There's times when distractions are taking place and life is happening and Sometimes we just need to say, I want the priority in life. And I want to sit at the Lord's feet. Priority. Mary had a priority. Jesus was coming to her house. And she was coming to the house and she was wanting to listen and to learn. So often, it's a picture of discipleship. The devotion that she has is I want to learn. I wanted to sit and I wanted to soak up the very words of God. She was transported, if you would. If Jesus is talking and she's sitting at the feet of Jesus and Martha is so busy doing, it's kind of like, if you would, going to a movie, a movie that you enjoy. And you go into that movie and that movie starts and all of a sudden, two and a half hours later, that movie is over with. And you are transported. You are engrossed in that movie. You were so involved that you didn't worry about getting the popcorn or going to the bathroom. Or you were just watching that movie. And that's the way that Mary was at the feet of Jesus. So my question, if that is what it's like to sit at the feet of Jesus... How long has it been since you have come to church and been engulfed in the words of Christ? How long has it been since when Jesus' words are spoken that you sit down and you say, I want to learn? I'm not putting in my hour time. I am actually coming to church to worship Him. I'm not coming in late. I'm not playing on my phone. I'm not talking to my friends. I'm actually sitting at the feet of Jesus and listening to his words and learning from him. She was glued to every word. Her posture was important because she was at his feet. It's talking about humility. Talking about being at somebody's feet is saying, I understand that he is important and I am humbled because I get the opportunity to learn. And we understand the authority that Jesus has within our life that we get to sit at his feet and learn. It's not set at his feet and play games. It's not set at his feet and do certain things. It's set at his feet and learn and listen. I believe that when we sit at Jesus' feet, he does certain things for us. We understand who we are. We understand what God has given to us. And we understand how important it is. Because once we get off of our feet, get up on our feet, and we start serving, sometimes we serve like Martha did and we get distracted. Martha's distraction was overwhelming. Here's the deal. Could you imagine Jesus being in your living room and talking to his disciples and maybe your sister is there and you're over here, you're working. And you're doing what you think is need to be done. You're making sure that Jesus and his disciples are fed and they have certain drinks. But have you ever been to the point that you've served so much that you get mad that nobody else is serving with you? Do you get to the point that you're working in the nursery and the children's ministry and maybe everybody else is sitting in church and 
They're not helping you. That's what Martha did. Martha was sitting here serving and she was mad at her sister for worshiping. And here's what she did. She took food and she went into Jesus in the midst of his conversation to his disciples and he interrupted Jesus. Could you imagine that? Jesus talking and giving a discourse about his future and about what God is going to do. And you interrupt and say, Jesus, I don't care what you're talking about. My issue is my sister is not helping me. Tell her to help me. I need help. Have you ever interrupted Jesus? Have you ever went to Jesus and said, what my issue is is more important than what's going on in this world? The audacity to do that? The pride that it takes to do that? Martha sitting and worshiping. Mary sitting and worshiping. And Martha coming in with arrogance. And telling Jesus exactly what to do. Have you ever done that? The Lord, I think here's what you should do. Lord, I think my finances need to be like this. Lord, I think you need to do this. Lord, if you would only do this. If you would make this happen. And Jesus is saying, Martha... Martha, you're distracted. You're pulled in many ways. You have lost the priority of serving. If you think that serving gets you closer to me, you are absolutely wrong. Just because you serve doesn't make you more spiritual. Just because you serve doesn't make you closer to me. What happens is sometimes in that anger... And that frustration, because not everybody does what you do, makes you feel like you are better than everybody else. And Jesus is saying this, Martha, Martha, you're pulled in so many ways. You're distracted in so many ways. It doesn't make you more spiritual. And I believe Jesus is pointing out a couple things here. Jesus pinpoints two enemies of contentment and discipleship. And that first two would be, number one, distractions. Your mind is pulled in many ways. You come to church and you're distracted. You're distracted about what's going to happen this afternoon. Whether it's the Cowboys football game, or the Chiefs, or maybe it's what's for lunch. Or maybe it's what's taking place on the ball field. Or maybe it's your finances. Or maybe it's even your relationships. You're sitting here today in a worship service. Trying to sit at the feet of Jesus. But you're so distracted. You're distracted to the point. And I, I watch it. I'm going to be honest with you. I watched three weeks. There's cameras in here. For the last three weeks I've been sitting at the house. On my church computer watching the, the cameras. I watch every classroom what's going on. And, you know, it's kind of weird from this perspective compared to that perspective. Because in that perspective, I see Facebook being played. I see people sleeping. I see all kinds of different distractions that I'm thinking if we're sitting at the feet of Jesus on Sunday morning. And we're distracted so much that we're playing Facebook instead of listening to what God has to say. We're not even, we're not even a good Martha. Martha. I don't even know if we're really part of the family. And so often the distractions are so real. I like to ask, have we prepared to come to church even before we come to church? Do our kids see us being prepared? Or is it something that we have to do? See, I believe that if we come to church and it's, oh, we have to go to church, hurry up and get ready. And we're not prepared personally. We're not even sitting at the feet of Jesus. We're so distracted in so many ways that it really makes no difference what we do when we come to church. See, Martha was distracted. And the word distracted means pulled. She was pulled in many ways. She knew that Jesus was in the house. And she knew that her sister was sitting at the feet of Jesus. And she was mad. She was frustrated. She was angered to the point that she started serving not out of love, but out of guilt. 
She started doing things for them because she had to, because her sister was sitting at the feet of Jesus. And so often when we serve, we get frustrated because somebody else isn't doing what we have done. And in our spiritual gifts, we do that same thing. Some of us have a gift of service, acts of kindness, love, or even generosity. And here's what takes place. We judge others out of our gift instead of their gift. If somebody doesn't do what I do as much as I do it, they're not as spiritual as I am. So we look at them out of a critical eye because they are not as good as me. You know what that is? That's pride. Although you're trying to do it out of a spiritual gift, I want to serve, but if she would only help me, we would be okay. But Mary, her spiritual gift was devotion, love. I just want to hear Jesus. I want to have a relationship with him. But if I get mad at somebody because they're trying to have a devotion for Christ, I have the problem. Now, if she only had a devotion for Christ, but never served and never loved and never gave that out, she has the problem. Mary and Martha is in all of us. We all have those same issues. But distractions, they're real. The second one is anxiety. Distractions cause anxiety. For the first time in my life, I'm on anxiety medicine. I'm on blood pressure medicine, anxiety medicine, seizure medicine. I'm on all kinds of medicines. I just give me the medicine, and I'll look at it, and I'll take it. But I'm on anxiety medicine, and pills do not change my anxiety. They may mask my anxiety. It doesn't change my anxiety. I'm frustrated. Every time I get a headache, I'm afraid I'm going to have another stroke. Every time I have an issue, I feel like I don't know what's going to take place. But 40 days ago, I thought I was going to die. I didn't think I'd ever be able to stand up and talk to you. I didn't think I'd ever be able to do anything for you again. And that makes you have a very soul-searching few weeks. What is it? What is the anxiety? What is the frustration within our life? Sometimes the anxiety and the distractions cause us to do different things. Sometimes it hurts. And the Bible tells us in Philippians chapter 4 verse 6, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God. Serving without God is being busy. <laughs> Busyness causes anxiety. And when we are anxious and we're frustrated, it causes things to take place within our life and causes flesh to overwhelm us. See, for so many years, for so many years, I thought. I was doing the right thing. I thought I was serving you. I thought if I served you seven days a week, 14 hours a day, counseling you, loving you, ministering to you, praying for you, I was doing the right thing. And I found out over the last few weeks that serving you without worshiping Him is just being busy. And sometimes at the feet of Jesus, sometimes he gets in your face, doesn't he? I heard this. I said, Jesus gets in your soup bowl bigger than you can. And when you get into your soup bowl and you get that in your face, Jesus can get in your face. And Jesus can call you out like no one else. And Jesus calls us out in certain ways that is mind-boggling. 
Because when Jesus calls you out in Scripture, you have no recourse. When the Holy Spirit of God pricks your heart about sin, it is overwhelming. Be anxious for nothing but in everything through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be known unto God. When I'm anxious, I learned I can't serve you until I first come to God. I can't fix you. Now, I'm going to be honest about something else. The Lord, half a stroke gives you an honest moment, I guess. But I did counseling four days a week. And I'm a good counselor. I'm a good counselor because I know what you need to do. But just being a good counselor doesn't fix somebody's issues. Do you know who fixes people's issues? Jesus. So I was sitting up three or four hours a night talking to different people, telling them what they should do instead of asking God to fix them and what they need to do. You know what that is? That's sin. That's sin on my part. Because I thought I was good enough to fix somebody's issues. And I'm not. And neither are you. The only way that your issues are going to be fixed is if you sit at the feet of Jesus. If you listen to his words. If you allow Christ to give to you truth. Martha's priorities were wrong. She had no peace because she was busy. Is your mind entangled with things at the end of the day that you should have done or you need to do? Martha realized that she lost the priority when Jesus spoke to her. When Jesus said this to her, Martha, Martha. Could be Saul, Saul. Or the Bible says it could be Simon, Simon. Anytime Jesus calls your name twice, it says, suck it up and listen up because what I'm about ready to tell you is going to change your life. And Jesus stood up and said, Martha, Martha, you are distracted or pulled many ways. What she has chosen is the good thing. What you are doing is you are so busy, which is good. But don't get so busy to lose out on what the important thing is. Jesus is saying, I am here for another six months. And then I'm going to die. And what's going to take place is those that sit at my feet and those that learn my word. You are going to change the world for the cause of Jesus Christ. It's not going to change the world by serving. You're not going to change the world by giving somebody a drink. You're not going to change the world by doing counseling. You're not going to change the world by helping people. What's going to change the world is the words and the forgiveness and the salvation of Jesus. And so often we get caught up in taking care of people. We forget the only thing that's going to change somebody's life is the very thing that Jesus Christ gave to us. And that's the salvation of Jesus Christ on the cross. We can serve this world, which is good. Or we could change the world by talking about Jesus. And Mary chose the good thing. Learning about him so she could talk to others about what he has done for her. And here's what he said. And he went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her to help me. Have you ever bossed Jesus around? Lord, if you would do this. Lord, if you would make that happen. If you just would do this, everything would be all right. And Martha was bossing Jesus around. No different than what we do in many cases. Mary was submissive. Martha was arrogant. But Martha wasn't just arrogant. That's who she was. 
She wasn't less Christian than Mary. She was just speaking out of her gift mix. And some people are submissive and some people are very, what's the right word? Strong-willed, I guess, as I can't, my mind is blank on that one. But Martha needed to be heard. So what is distracting you from sitting at the feet of Jesus? Are you distracted when you come to worship? Do you arrive early anticipating what the Lord will reveal to you? Or are you just here because your kids need to go to youth department? Are you here because your mom and your dad or your husband or your wife is making you? Are you often late? Do you come in late because worship is too long? What time do you get here? And what is the priority when you are? I believe if we're going to be where God wants us to be, when Jesus walks into the room, we're at his feet. We're at his feet from the first worship song to the last amen. We're here because we want to be here, because we want to be here to listen to what God has to say to us. And what is worship? Worship is part of the worship service. Worship is sitting at the feet of Jesus. If I could give you this illustration, and it's so true. Worship is the ability that God has given to Justin to open up our hearts and to toil our hard hearts. Is to open up and allow the Word of God to be implanted within our hearts. After five to six days of working and outside of God's Word and doing so busy and you come into church and what worship is is allowing God to speak. Not only to speak to the congregation but to speak to me. Oh, that word may be good for you or you may need a dad or that's what you need to hear. And I don't care what God is talking to somebody else about. I want to be Mary and I want to hear what God is speaking to me about. Because when God speaks to me, it changes everything. The searching of all the priorities within the life. I have to say this. Out of all the priorities that I have. As Jesus told Martha, she has chosen the good portion. She has chosen the right thing. Distractions are not good, but worship is. The Lord answered, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many different things. I was not a good patient at the hospital. <laughs> Um, there's all kinds of stories about my anxieties. and uh, I'm going to give you one just so you can laugh at me. And I probably shouldn't. Don't judge me on this. I was out of my mind. I was on medication. But uh, I, I was care flighted from Bonham, Texas to Plano. And I don't remember anything for, the, for about five to seven days. They thought I was, they thought I was going to die. So they care flighted me this 54 miles, which I'm going to be on 54 miles. You know how much that is in a care flight? $50,000. And when your insurance only pays a third of it, it kind of freaks out. You talk about how do you stay calm when you have medical bills, right? So they care flighted me to Plano. And I was out of it for four or five days. So if you came and seen me and I, and I said things I shouldn't have said, I apologize. I wasn't, I wasn't Pastor Thomas at that time. But uh, they gave me IVs, and I had IVs all over the place and oxygen on my mouth. And, and I, I, if you know me very well, I, I can't sit still for more than two minutes without moving. And, and so I had IVs, so I was pulling IVs out on my arms all the time. There was blood all over my bed, blood all over the bathroom. And the, I mean, I was just, don't put anything on me. So I, they, 3 o'clock in the morning, I had to go to the bathroom, and I pushed the button. And no nurse came. And so they gave me some, that night they gave me some uh, laxatives. So if you know a man at 3 o'clock in the morning tied down to the bed with IVs in his hand and having to go to the bathroom, I said, no, nope, 
So I jerked this one off, and I jerked that one off, and I pulled the IVs out of here. I pulled the mask off. Blood was all over the bed, and I didn't make it to the bathroom. Yeah, I blew that place up, let me tell you. <laughs> so that nurse, that nurse came in. I'm just being honest with you. That nurse came in about 30 minutes later, and he goes, he goes, what in the world did you do? And I, I wasn't Pastor Bruce at that time. I said, if you would have been in here on time, if you would have taken this thing off. And they looked at blood all over the place, and, and uh, they, they, they knew I was a pastor. They probably didn't think I was, should have been a pastor, but <laughs> I, was definitely, I was definitely struggling at that time. And the anxiety and the stress and the frustration of being handcuffed to a bed. You talk about anxieties. And that's what some people feel like in life. That they're tied. And they're frustrated. And nobody cares. And nobody comes to the rescue. And the only way out is to fight. The only way out is to take control of life yourself. And when you take control of life yourself, nobody wins. Martha was that way. She had so many things going on in her life that she cared more about what other people thought than what Jesus thought. She barged into Jesus as he was talking. She cared about others, about what they thought. So let me give you, if you're Martha, how many of you guys are Marthas? Raise your hand. Be honest. Sometimes we're Marthas. Um, she cared more about what people thought about what she did than to sit at the feet of Jesus. And the Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, Do not lay yourself treasures in earth where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal. But lay it for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth or rust destroy, and the thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be. Her treasure was into serving was into making people happy, taking care of everybody, which is a very good thing. But where your heart is, that's where your treasure will be. See, Martha was caught up so much in helping and serving and doing, she lost sight of the most important thing. And Mary's treasure was listening and learning. And Jesus says, Mary has chosen the good part. What you're doing is okay. What you're doing is good. But at the end of the sermon, at the end of our life, is what relationships do you have and who do you know? She wanted to be thought well of, a hard worker. She wanted to keep a clean house. She wanted everybody to love her. I, I, my mom's name is Martha. And uh, it is so ironic that um, a few years ago, before my dad passed, Thanksgiving dinner. Everybody was there. She had eight kids and a bunch of grandkids, and everybody came to her house. And my mother was so busy cooking and doing, she was mad. She was mad at the daughter in law, she was mad at the grandkids, she was mad at her kids. Because she was so busy making the, the turkey and the dressings and the pies and everybody coming in and making sure everything was so perfect for the Thanksgiving dinner. You know what she did? She absolutely ruined Thanksgiving. She ruined it. Not that the food wasn't good, but she made everybody else feel bad that they were there without doing everything. But you know what? If somebody tried to help her, you know what she'd have done? I got this. Some moms give me okay on that, right? I've got this. But so often, because we are so busy doing, we lose sight on the important thing. And at a Thanksgiving dinner, you know what the important thing is? It's about the family and the relationships that you have. They're not going to remember the Thanksgiving dinner. What they're going to remember is mom and dad and the kids and the relationships that we had. Sometimes Martha's can get so distracted that they lose sight of the important and sometimes when we're distracted, we lose focus 
And we ruin everybody else's devotion because we're so mad that the devotion is not for God. So what's Mary's good portion? Luke chapter, four, Luke chapter 10, 42. But the one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part which will not be taken away. Mary was troubled about many things, but only one thing is important, and that's Christ's word. It has been brought to my attention many times over that we can keep people in church for doing all kinds of different things. But keeping people in church is not the priority of church. Can I tell you what the priority of church is? Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins and mine. The word of God is the priority of the church. It's not about children's ministry, youth ministry, music ministry. It's about what they call what worship is all about. It's when Justin sings about the cross. It's about us living what Jesus Christ went through. It's in the youth ministry talking about people that give their life to Christ. It's children's ministry reaching people for Jesus Christ. It's not the entertainment value. It's not making people happy. It's about communicating the very words of Christ. And Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus, learning the thing that Christ wanted her to have. Now, what's very unique and very important is that Martha finally got it. Martha finally got it. A few months down the road, Jesus was called by his disciples and said, Lazarus is dead. Lazarus is Mary and Martha's brother. And Jesus waited a couple days and he waited his way to Bethany and he found Lazarus dead. But I want you to hear what Martha said. Martha the busy one. Martha the one that interrupted him. Martha the one that uh, was arrogant. And didn't really care what Jesus had to say just as long as they were served. She said this in John chapter 11. And bear with me because I can't see straight. So when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away. And many of the Jews had joined the women around Mary and Martha and comforted them concerning their brother. Now Martha, as soon as she had heard that Jesus was coming, went out to meet him. But Mary was sitting and serving in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at that first day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may be dead, will rise again. And whoever lives in me and shall never die, do you believe this? And she said to him, this is what Martha's answer is, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who has come into this world. When Jesus told her in the house, Martha, Martha, you're distracted. You're pulled in every different way. I believe when Jesus' word comes to you, I believe Martha left here hearing what Jesus said. Martha, Martha, you're distracted. You're pulled. What Mary has done is the right thing. I believe she took her empty vase I believe she went back to her kitchen and she contemplated what Jesus told her. And she realized that serving is important. And the church could not be the church that it is unless we have the servants that we have. But serving without worshiping is almost idolatry and almost sin. I believe Martha took her stuff back. And the Bible doesn't say this. 
But I bet she thinks, you know what? If Mary chose the good part, I want part of that. I want some of that good part. I believe she put her apron off and she walked back into the living room and she listened to what Jesus was saying. And the application so well is this. We can serve and we can do and we can be busy and we can do everything that God thinks that we should do. And those are good things. But until we sit and we listen to what God says and sit at His feet and let Him be our Lord and let Him be our Savior, we can end up being like Martha and be mad and have anxieties and have stress. I believe Martha finally got it. Is your life full of distractions? Do you find yourself anxious and troubled over a lot of different things? Do you find yourself reacting without praying? Do you find yourself getting mad without talking to God? Do you find yourself going weeks, months, or even years without sitting at the feet of Jesus? And you wonder why you're upset. Do you wonder why you're full of anxiety? Let the superficial go. And we need to grab a hold of the eternal. See the superficial is this. I care what people think. I want them to think that I am good. I want them to think that I am spiritual. I want to come to church to let people know that I'm a Christian. I want them to think that I've got everything under control. Folks that's superficial. Eternal is, I'm going to let go of my anxieties and I'm going to sit at the feet of Jesus. I made some major decisions over this last few weeks about my own life and about the ministry. I've realized that I have served sometimes in the flesh. I have served without praying. I've worked without Christ because I can. I'm good at certain things. But just because you're good at certain things doesn't mean that's what God wants us to do. In everything that we do, we should bring glory and honor to Christ. Not bring glory and honor to Bruce. Not to say you're good at this and you're good at that. That's superficial. But I need to sit at the feet of Jesus and say, I'm not going to let the distractions of life get me down. If we're devoted to Him. If we're really a child of God. I want you to evaluate a couple things. Do you sit at His feet? When Mary heard that Jesus was coming to her house. She wasn't distracted about the serving. She wasn't distracted about the cobwebs in the corner. What she wanted to do is she wanted to sit at his feet. And she wanted to learn. And when we come to church. And we're trying to sit at Jesus' feet. Are we so distracted about what's taking place tonight or tomorrow. Or next week. That we can't say forget that stuff. Let me worship him. Let me sit at his feet. Let me learn of him. This is six months before Jesus was going to be crucified. And I believe that Jesus looked at Martha and said, Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for serving me. But you know what's going to change the world? Is my words. Is worshiping me. This world is not going to remember you giving me cookies and punch what the world is going to remember is my words and church what we have to remember is what the world is going to remember is us setting his feet and proclaiming his words 
Are we going to be a church that just so busy serving each other that we don't sit at his feet? It doesn't change our hearts and change our lives. And we get out of church, we'll say, okay, I was distracted, then let's go on. Or were we sitting at his feet? Were we learning? Were we growing? Are we changed because of what Jesus has taught us? I don't want to be a church that gets so busy just doing, we lose sight of the priority. And the priority is, what does Jesus want? What does Jesus want for my life? <laughs> Friday night, a few weeks ago, when I went to bed, I thought I was dead. I thought I was going to either wake up comatose or I was going to be dead. And when you have a real moment like that, when I felt the blood go out of my brain, I had to hold my head up and my head was hurting so much. And I laid in that bed and I was just cold sweat. I was hot. It was, it, was, it was miserable. And I said, Lord, just take me home. I am ready. And then you wake up a few days later, not knowing what has taken place. It is a life-changing experience. I've lost 35 pounds. <laughs> I don't want to eat, I don't want to drink, I don't care about anything. But what I care about right now is I want to be a Mary. I want to learn what Jesus has in store for me. I can't give to you what I went through. What I can give to you is what the Holy Spirit has given to me to say. And if I can empower if I can inspire, if I can intrigue you to do one thing, it's let's worship. Let's learn. Let's not worry about what people think, but let's worry about sitting at the feet of Jesus and do what he has called us to do. If you're a Martha, there's nothing wrong with Marthas. The church needs Marthas to survive. But a Martha, without participating in worship, is close to burnout. And what happens, we do, we serve for so long, and then we get tired, we get frustrated, we get mad. Don't get to the point where you get mad at serving. Put your serving down. Sit at the feet of Jesus. And you know what that will inspire you to do? To serve. But if you're serving and doing and you're mad and you're angry because nobody else is doing what you're doing, time out. Mary has chosen the important to sit and learn and to grow. Martha, Martha, what you're doing is important, but it's not the important thing. What Mary has chosen and nothing can take that away. What Mary experienced is a relationship with Jesus. True love and devotion to our Lord. And when Jesus was crucified, Mary was present. And she walked with Jesus to the end. And that's what I want to do. And that's what I want you to do. Not get distracted and torn from every side. But to say, I love Jesus to the point I want to learn of him. I want him to teach me and to grow me. And I want to be his disciple to the very end. Not till it gets hard. Not till something takes place. I want to get rid of the flesh. I want to get rid of the anxieties. I want to get rid of what I can do. And I want to sit down at the feet of Jesus and say, Lord, teach me. Grow me. The only way that we're going to be who God wants us to be is if we get to be in the seat of Mary. 
Now my invitation is very obvious. Martha's, and we're all there. If we only serve out of obligation, we're going to burn out. I was there, and I am there now. What I have learned is that I need to quit being Martha sometimes and to be a Mary and to worship and to love and to learn from him. And if I worship and learn and learn from him, I can serve. But if I only serve without worshiping, I'm going to get burned out. My blood pressure's 210 over 105. And I'm going to stroke out and die. But if I worship and turn my anxieties and my distractions to God and not be pulled in every different direction, but be pulled in one way, and that's to honor Him. What He does, He gives to me a peace that I don't understand. He gives to me the ability to trust and to love and to honor. Invitation today is, are you a Martha? Do you, do you need to maybe sit at the feet of Jesus a little bit? Do you get frustrated when other people don't do what you do? I think sometimes that we need to come to the feet of Jesus and say, Lord, my life is yours. I am so distracted in so many different areas. Our families are distracted. Our church is distracted. But this one thing is good. is setting and learning of me. And nothing can take that away from you if we just allow God His priority and not your priority.